guys, this is day two of the STF challenge, and uh, today's country is France. Uh, there were a lot of a lot of movies I could have picked for this. Uh, just let me look over at my collection. Okay, so I'm looking at right now our Frontiers, High Tension, I Stand Alone, Martyrs. I'm sure a lot of people are going to disagree that I didn't pick that. And uh, those are the only ones that I see. There are plenty of others, though. Uh, don't get me wrong. But I decided to pick two today uh, because they're the ones that affected me the most. They were very, very different from each other. So let's just start off with uh, the first one. First one is a slasher, and it's called Inside. I know the cover really, really sucks. The movie itself is pretty awesome. It's about uh, on Christmas Eve. This woman's uh, husband died like six months before. She's home alone, and she's going to give birth the next day uh, via C-section. And, uh, sorry if it's via or via, I'm terrible at pronouncing things. Uh, anyway, this crazy woman uh, knocks on the door and does uh, like, let me in, my car is broken. And the woman's like, no, I'm not going to let you in. I mean, it's pretty weird. And she's like, let me in, Sarah. And then she starts talking all about this woman's life. She knows everything about her. And uh, long story short, the lady finally breaks in after a while and gets a pair of scissors. And uh, the rest of the movie is that woman trying to get the baby out with a pair of scissors. So it's a different C-section than the lady was planning. And uh, yeah, this is uh, probably one of the most realistic, gory movies. That makes sense. Dead Alive is the goriest movie, but that's so silly and over the top, it can't be even considered realistic. This one, on the other hand, can be. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of blood spray, a lot of, uh, a lot of gore, uh, just a lot of insanity in general, and it all looks very convincing, for the most part. And uh, the ending is pretty, pretty sick. Uh, this is a definite spoiler, so... I'm going to wave my hand, and then when I wave my head, hand for a second time, uh, that means the spoiler's over. Okay. The ending, basically, the woman who uh, has the pair of scissors does get the baby out, and they show everything. They show her cutting the woman's stomach open, and it's disgusting. And then afterwards, there's a long paneling, panel shot, if that's what it's called, just scanning over uh, the stairs where it happens. Blood's everywhere. The woman's guts are there. You see her body, and the woman is cradling the, ba the baby. From what we know, and from what the woman said, she's actually going to take care of the baby, but still, it's very sick. And, uh, spoiler over. Uh, another reason why I picked this movie is because this actually does happen, and, uh, if I remember correctly, this happened recently, or at least a woman was convicted recently of murder because of an incident like this. So, that's inside. Uh, be warned when you watch it. And by the way, that might be the scariest movie I've ever seen. When I think of the scariest movie I've ever seen, if somebody asked me that, I think of that movie. That's just me. And the second movie is a lot different. It can be considered a good movie. Uh, a lot of people hated it when it first came out. It's very, very controversial. And uh, it's Gaspar Noe's Irreversible. This is definitely the most disturbing of his work. Maybe not the best. Enter the Void was a pretty good flick, too. Very trippy and awesome. But, I don't know, this one is... It's, it's irreversible. Basically, sorry for saying basically so much. This is a rape and revenge movie in reverse order. But it's much, much more than that. It's a lot more twists. And, uh... A lot of things you don't expect in this. Now, there's only two scenes in this movie. But the two scenes are... Maybe the most uh, brutal, disturbing out of any other scene. So it has the most uh, realistic murder I've ever seen, and the most realistic rape. All right, we'll start with the murder, which is the revenge part of the film, which is like at 23 minutes in the movie or something like that. This guy uh, has his head continually bashed in the fire extinguisher, and this scene lasts for about two minutes. And they show every blow, but then again they don't. The camera. It doesn't really do uh, different shots. It's like all one shot for each scene. And it spins around. It's like spinning around. And uh, there's this, uh, this noise in the background. This like frequency is playing. And it's supposed to induce like, fear and nausea. And it's very effective. And uh, 
you know, so the camera's spinning. So you can see it, but you can't see it at the same time. Uh, but it's definitely not like filtered out. You can you can definitely see it. And every blow to the head just feels like fucking incredible. And then when the guy's done, the guy the guy's head looks like hamburger meat. And, but like his jaw is still moving. It's still twitching. And it's like brains. You can see his brains and everything. His skull is completely caved in. It's a very very intense scene. I think it's it's a pretty awesome scene though, in my opinion. You have to see the movie to really understand why. And then there is the most realistic and disturbing rape I've ever seen. Maybe the most disturbing scene of any movie I've ever seen. This is like number three or four on my most uh, fucked up movies. The, ones that, the sickest, most disturbing, whatever you want to call it. Because of this scene right here. And Monica Bellucci is walking down the hallway in the scene, like a subway tunnel. And uh, she sees this pimp and his prostitute walking down the hallway. And he... Uh, pushes his girl across the, like, pushes her into the wall, like, smacks her, and that woman was able to get away, but Monica Bellucci witnesses this, and, uh, the pimp, like, rape, the pimp just is like, bitch, what are you gonna do about it, and makes her lie down on the ground, and he rapes her up the ass for nine minutes, and it took everything in me to not look away in this scene, and it, or to even just, like, leave the room when I was watching this, because this scene is horrifying. It's unbelievable. The guy's non-stop yelling at her, and like, it, the dialogue in this movie is very filthy. It, it's disgusting, and during the rape, this guy walks down the subway, you can see this, he walks down the tunnel, and he's just watching this happen, and he walks away from it. That made the scene even worse for me, because if I saw it happen, I don't know what I would do, but I would definitely not walk away from that. And then, and then when he's done, and she's crawling away, he, he's happy, like he's he fucking got off, and he's like, bitch, where are you going? And he takes her and beats her so badly that she goes into a coma. And then, spoiler, we find out later in the movie that she was actually pregnant when this happened. Spoiler over. So that adds to the rape even more. And it is a horrifying scene. Uh, I cannot believe that they went that far, but definitely show you the true horror of rape. Okay, just thinking about that kind of makes me, you know. But those are the two movies I picked Inside and Irreversible. Both, uh, both must if you haven't seen them already. I'm sure you have, but definitely watch them. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, I believe tomorrow is Germany. And if uh, I'm lucky, I'm going to watch both Necromantic movies, maybe, maybe tonight. So that way I'll, I'll watch them tomorrow. And then if I do that, I'll do a review too, separate from tomorrow's entry. So yeah, thank you guys for watching this. Uh, this has been our video by Squirrelface. And once again, thank you for the 100 subs. Uh, it means a lot to me. And have a kick-ass day. Bye.